Ellie, and this is my first ever solo book talk. This is my sidekick, Dobby. Say hi. <laughs> well, I've done some book talk type things with other people in the past, but now I'm doing it myself. So the first book I am ever talking about in a solo book talk is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Moss. And it's fitting because Sarah J. Moss is my favorite current author meaning my favorite author that's writing series currently that I love. Whatever, she's awesome, and this book is awesome, so let's get started. The first of the series is A Court of Thorns and Roses, and this is an arc that my friend Flo sent me about a little over a year ago, so thank you, Flo, I love you. And this book was fantastic. It was a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. If you have not read it, you should do so. I would highly recommend it. But today we're talking about book two. A Court of Mist and Fury returns to the characters that we loved in book one. And this one is based on the story of Persephone, which I didn't actually know that much about going in. I had looked it up months ago when I found out that this book was about it. Honestly, I don't remember that much about it. I knew going in that it was about Persephone who at some point needs to be taken into the underworld to live, but that's really all I knew about it. Um, I was very excited going into this book because I adored the first one, and it, by the way, I have a review for the first book that I will mark below. So I've been waiting forever for this book to come out, and once I got my hands on it, I could not wait to read it. I actually got the special Target edition which has an extra scene at the end. So if you have read it, but you didn't get that special scene at the end, as you can see here, um, I do recommend it if you have a chance to check that out. So I usually don't read new adult books just because, well, it's not for me typically, but the story in this book was just phenomenal. The buildup of the relationships and Feyre's character growth, it was just amazing. I could just go on and on about my, the respect I have for this character. Basically, it follows Feyre when she's happily engaged to Tamlin from the first book and living in his court and everything is dandy, except she has this deal with Rysand that means for one week in every month, she has to go and live with him, who's basically her fiancé's worst enemy. And obviously Tamlin is not happy about this, but what can you do? They have a deal. It kept her alive. There you go. I think that's all I can say without spoiling something from the book. So if you haven't read it yet, definitely go check it out. It is amazing. Five stars, hands down. The first one I only gave four and a half stars, but this one's amazing. So go read. Go. Leave. Bye. As I started reading this book, I actually needed to look back at my book of A Court of Thorns and Roses because... I was confused by the way Tamlin's character was, but then when I went back and read my original review, I remembered I never really loved Tamlin in the first book. I loved Lucian, never fully loved Tamlin, but I thought it was because he was just purposely being standoffish because that was part of what he needed to be to break the spell. And at the point that it didn't matter anymore he was being standoffish because nobody could know how much he cared about Feyre. But then this book started and he was actually emotionally abusive. Like not letting her do anything she felt like she needed to do. Locking her in the house. And you don't lock a girl in a house. You know that, yeah, no, I was so glad that she did not put up with that and she got out of there. And that, oh, like I said earlier, so much respect for Feyre in this book. She was amazing. Okay, I need to talk about Rysand. So, Rysand, Rysand, I call, okay, so I say Rysand, but then I say Riss when it's just the shortened version. So I'm not sure if I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry, Sarah. I'm sorry, anybody that knows the proper pronunciation. I'm trying. Um, but anyway, 
the build up to their relationship was adorable. And that's the thing that was really missing in the first one. You, you kind of see her being curious about Tamlin, but you don't really know what's going on until all of a sudden, oh, I'm in love with him. But in this one, first of all, she's supposed to hate him. He is the worst enemy of her fiancé, who she still thinks she's absolutely in love with at this point. So you're supposed to hate him. She's supposed to hate him. But then there's this flirtation going on. And it, you can tell they're only half joking when they're flirting, if even half. And it just gets building and building and building. And then you start to realize that he really cares about her. His comments about feeling all of her pain and then... The, what he was talking about when he heard her neck snap and how it was like the worst sound he'd ever heard. It just, it was so much more real than, when, than whenever Tamlin saw. And the fact that he wanted her to be an equal, he was never holding her back. Like, yeah, he wanted her to be safe, but he was saying, yeah, if you want to go kick some butt, go kick some butt. I'm not going to stop you. And then all of the new characters in the story, there's... Um, Cassian, who's just hilarious, and he wasn't my favorite character, just because I don't think he's somebody I would be friends with in real life, but he was hilarious and wonderful, and I did love him in the story. And then there was Azrael, who was so quiet, but wonderful, and his little crush on Moore, Moore, I love Moore, I think she's my favorite new character in the book. She was a genuine friend, which Pharaoh was saying she's never had a female that she could actually trust before, because her sisters were kind of crap when she was growing up. Um, but more is there, and she genuinely wants to be her friend and wants to be there for her, but also isn't willing to like push her to places where she's uncomfortable. And I love more, and I love the little, I don't want to call it a triangle because it's not a triangle between the three of them, but there are emotions. There are triangular emotions of some sort, although I would not call it a love triangle. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what it was. Okay, so let's talk about... The moment Feyre finds out that she and Rysand are mates. So he was just shot out of the sky. And Feyre is terrified. She, by this point, she has already figured out that she's in love with him. It's pretty obvious. But then she goes and tries to save him. And in trying to find, out, find a way to save him, she finds out that they're mates. Not only are they mates, he has known about it for quite some time. She is furious. She, I mean, I'm sure if his life wasn't currently in her hands, she would have just stormed off right then and there. But she kind of needs to go save his life. And even though she's furious with him, she still does love him. And she just found out that she was destined to love him. So she's going to go save his life. So she goes back. She saves him. She's she gets him back home, and then she storms off. And Moore, who, like I said, I adore. Hey, that rhymed. Um, takes her to a house that nobody has access to except people in Ryson's family. And Feyre, because, you know, they're mates. And she's furious, but then she starts painting. And she kind of lets everything out with painting, which she hadn't been able to do in so long. And... By the time Ryson figures out where she is and comes to her, she's kind of let everything sink in. And there's the beautiful moment where she just asks him if he wants soup. And he just stops and looks at her. And she's like, um, what's the big deal? And he basically tells her that a woman feeding her mate is acceptance of the bond and basically if she continues to offer him food it's her saying that she wants to be his mate and she wants to be with him so she realizes this is kind of a big deal 
And there are still things she doesn't understand about Rysand that from being with Tamlin, she doesn't trust. So she asks him to tell her the story. And he goes on and on about pretty much everything that she ever wanted to know. And then at the end, she's just like, eat. And, oh, sorry. Okay. Fan girling. They're mates. There's that new adult filled scene, several scenes, um, where they just can't keep their hands off each other. And I'm going to brush over that part because, like I said, I normally read young adult. But then we're going to go to the scene when they are trying to turn off the cauldron that will basically ruin the entire world, and they are captured. I was literally speechless when they walk up and Tamlin and Lucian are standing there. At this point, I didn't like Tamlin. I was over him. But I didn't think he'd actually be working for the king. For what? So they go up and then they appear there and it turns out they made a deal and the deal was that they would help the king if he would bring Feyre back to Tamlin. And really Tamlin, if she, she, she clearly didn't want to be with you at this point. I know you're upset, I know you're hurt, but let her make her own decision for once, really. Anyway, one of my favorite parts in the whole book is when Favor realizes that Rysand is holding his breath because there's a smell that mates give off when they're together once they've had that bond. And she realizes that he doesn't want Tamlin and Lucian and the king to smell it. But then in one quick moment, they do. And the king finds this hilarious, the fact that Feyre has found her mate after he made this deal with Tamlin. Tamlin obviously is horrified and doesn't understand and is pissed off. And it was kind of hilarious. But then Feyre's sisters come out and get turned into Fey. And not gonna lie, as somebody who preferred Lucian to Tamlin in the first book, and I have not given up on him yet, I loved the fact that he was mates with Elaine. Because I love both of those characters. And it's also going to be amazing in the third book when he is forced to be allies with Feyre, even though, like, he knows she's up to something, but they're going to be forced to be allies. Oh, and the thing we find out at the very end, the fact that Rysand, in keeping with his whole we are equals situation, made Feyre his high lady, which Tamlin said didn't exist. But guess what? Now it does. And like I said, that relationship, so much better. They're equals. They are wonderful. And this third book is just going to be amazing. I already said I give this five stars. It was pretty much flawless. The only complaint I have is that it was new adult when I don't, don't normally read new adult. But everything else was absolutely amazing. I would love to hear your thoughts. Write them below and check back for more.